Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be replacing our beautiful sun with the most massive star ever discovered, known as R136A1. Well, let's actually find out what happens to our solar system, and welcome to What The Math. So before we actually do this replacement, let's briefly talk about what exactly is the star we're looking at and where is it located. Or actually, let's maybe talk about all of this as we literally replace our sun by erasing it from this system, maybe decelerating time a little bit, and placing R136A1 that's available to us underneath all of these stars right here. It's actually slightly incorrectly represented here. The mass given to us is 260 solar masses, but in reality, we've discovered that the mass is more close to about 315 masses of sun. So it is a little bit more massive uh, than it is in the game. Now, what do you think will happen? Well, obviously things will not go very well for our solar system. Beginning with pretty much everything getting sucked into the star within what seems to be ours. Our planet Earth is burning up and is turning into this little rock and basically is colliding with the star. Uh, and this all of this happened in under a day. If I look at planets like Jupiter, for example, it's already um, super, super hot and it's already flying toward the star as well. In other words, the entire solar system is destroyed in a dramatic fashion in what seems to be under a week time, or maybe just over a week. So all of these planets will burn up and will release a tremendous amount of energy, but also will collide with a star. Now, where is the star located? What is the star all about? And how come you may have never heard of it? First of all, the star is actually not in our galaxy. It's in a nearby galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud, and it's responsible for creating the most beautiful and the largest Okay, not the most beautiful, but the largest nebula known to us, known as the Tarantula Nebula. It's a nebula I've talked about uh, previously, I've shown it to you in many other videos, you can definitely check them out on the channel. And um, this particular star is essentially a collection of various matter that's combined and condensed into one very large wolf riot star that one day will very likely go supernova, which we're going to emulate right now, and will then... Look at Saturn. Wow, that's amazing. It's burning up and you can actually see the tail. It turned into a comet. And now it's gone. And anyway, so yeah, it will go with supernova and will create a very beautiful uh, nebula and will very likely create a black hole. So this will probably happen in the next uh, few million years and um, there will be a black hole left behind. And it's very likely that Tarantula Nebula will become some kind of other nebula that will last for a few um, thousand years and will then disappear as well. And there will be nothing left except for a lot of really cool looking baby stars that will be formed from all of this material that will be spread across um, the Large Magellanic Cloud. Now, what I wanted to actually do in this video, except for obviously destroying our solar system using R136A1, I wanted to see where would we actually have to place Earth in this particular system for, um, for Earth to, to have normal temperature. Essentially, how can we actually figure out where the habitable zone for this particular star is? So first of all, we're going to once again change its mass, making it 315 masses of the sun. And normally what you would do in a universe sandbox, you would go under view settings here and click on zones to see the habitable zone. But because this is such an unusual star, and I guess because there's maybe a bug in the game, we can't really see anything about the habitable zone. So we're going to have to eyeball it here. We're going to have to take our Earth and place it at different distances away from the star just to see how our Earth does. Let's start with the regular distance of one astronomical unit, take a guess of what's going to happen to our Earth, and let's zoom in and find out. Here's Earth, and look at that. It literally burns up in like what seems to be a few hours. It completely evaporates and turns into this very beautiful steam, which means that uh, no planet would actually survive this close 
to this particular star. It's so powerful, so strong, and so dramatically bright. As a matter of fact, it is the um, the most luminous star known to us at about 8.7 million luminosity of our sun, which implies that, you know, nothing can survive this close. Okay, how about we go with the distance of about, you know, Jupiter? Five astronomical units. So, what will happen to our Earth? And pretty much the same. Okay, maybe not exactly the same. The atmosphere has definitely burned up, but the temperature stopped at about 6,500 degrees Celsius. So, there might be some ultra-hot planets at this distance, but chances are they might not actually be in this area because uh, there will be a lot of solar flares, a lot of solar wind coming from this object, so it would very likely just destroy this as well. Okay, let's go a little bit farther. Let's go to the distance of where Neptune is. And at this distance, it still is pretty hot. 3000 degrees Celsius. It is getting better though, but as you can see, the atmosphere is right there. It's gone. It just burned up as well. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to a distance of about 100-ish astronomical units. That will be a distance of some of the farther um, dwarf planets in our solar system, like for example, Aries and Sedna. At this distance, wow, look at that. It seems to be green, blue and green. But nope, never mind. Spoke too soon. The temperature is still increasing. 1200, 1300 degrees Celsius. That's still a little bit too hot. Maybe very, very hot. That's actually hotter than any planet in our solar system. And this is at a distance where some of the farthest objects in our solar system are. Let's go to maybe 300 astronomical units. This is actually farther than anything we can think of. Um, the semi-imagery axis here is so far away that it's basically farther than most of the known objects to us uh, in our solar system. This is where most of the comets would be located for us. And the temperature is... okay. It just jumped to 90 degrees. It's under the boiling point of water. So, not particularly comfortable, but not super deadly yet either. Oh, never mind. It just became very hot. Over 100 degrees Celsius, not going to work. The water will evaporate. The Earth will become way too hot. All right, I'm going to 500, 500 astronomical units. This is basically farther away than anything we know. This is where some of the most distant comets are in our solar system. And at the distance of 500 astronomical units, which is this far away from the star, it's barely visible, the temperature is, so far, close to 30 degrees Celsius. Let's accelerate time a little bit, see what happens. Okay, still about... 15 degrees warmer than actual planet on Earth. Oh, never mind. It jumped up again. It's 40 degrees now. Wow, I have to go even farther. We actually have to go even farther for us to find the comfortable habitable zone around R136A1. So I'm going to have to go to a distance of about maybe... Let's go to 800 astronomical units. That is... That is essentially farther than anything we know and even at this distance the temperature is still pretty high 20 degrees celsius and i wonder if it's going to jump again let's wait a little bit and find out now i guess the cool thing about this particular star is that not only is it the uh, brightest star we know it's also one of the hottest uh, known to us it, it, its actual temperature is something like um 55,000 or 54,000 degrees Celsius, which is uh, more than 10 times hotter than our own sun. And it's also bigger in size, it's more powerful, and it has a lot of other cool features, such as, you know, being able to create an, an impressive nebula around itself. All right, distance is 1,000 astronomical units. Will this do it? Will our temperature be closer to 15 degrees, which is usually what it is? Nope, still too hot. Okay, let's go further. And looks like at a distance of 3,000 astronomical units, I was able to find that sweet spot. So right now, okay, it's maybe a little bit colder than it should be, but it's close to about 14 degrees Celsius. The average temperature on our planet Earth is about 15 degrees Celsius. So maybe this is just a little bit colder. 
but this is finally where we can kind of have a habitable world around this unusually powerful, unusually bright, unusually massive star known as R136A1. You know what, we might as well give it a cooler name. Let's call it something big and powerful. Like Solaris or something like that. I kind of like that, Solaris. Although that's technically from the word Sol, which is Sun. But I always thought Solaris was a pretty cool name to give anything that's big and bright and shiny. So, this uh, R136A1 uh, will probably not have many planets that are habitable around it. As a matter of fact, it's very unlikely to have any planets around it because, as you can see, it's going to burn away a lot of the stuff that's close to it. Most of it will actually get released into the outer solar system and will probably just join the rest of the nebula stuff. And because it's a wolf riot star, about which I've talked about previously on the channel, you can check out the video about them and learn more about them, um, it's very likely to, to be very unstable. So it's going to release a lot of massive amounts of stuff, which will probably strip the atmosphere and also the upper surface of any planet orbiting around it. But at a distance of 3,000 astronomical units, we seem to have a pretty nice habitable world here. Now, I'm sure you would like to know how long the year would, here would be. And the answer to that question is, well, one year on this particular Earth would last about 9,257 years. In other words, it takes this planet over 9,000 years to orbit just once. Well, good luck waiting for that birthday. Anyway. So, that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to explore R136A1 and wanted to place it in our solar system and see what would happen to things. And, as we've learned, nothing good. The solar system gets basically literally sucked into the star, things get overheated, things burn, and Earth survives for about... was it like an hour or something? Let's try it again. Let's see how long the Earth survives, starting now. And here we go, here we go, here we go. Looks like, oh, it's just, just over an hour. Yeah, just over an hour. That's not very long at all. What's left of Earth is just these particles that used to be its atmosphere. Well, anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space stuff and wants to learn through video games and potentially come back tomorrow to learn something else interesting, something that you might enjoy as well. I have initiated a supernova here, which will happen maybe sometime in the future, in the next few million years. And what's going to be left behind is going to be this unusually beautiful, very, very powerful black hole by the name of R136A1 Black Hole. In this game, it's only 15 masses of sun, but in real life, it might actually be a lot more massive than this. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.